Hello guys, this is Sean and today we are going to go over uh, this week's Quantum Weekly Update. Today I'm going to talk about four topics. First one is the Jung Sang Kim Special Lecture in Korea. Second one is IONQ's new major stockholder. Third one is Rigetti trying for the big changes. And the last one is signs for the quantum era. So I just wanted to say that the future of AI is the quantum. Okay, so February 10th, Jung Sang Kim had a special lecture in Korea. And he told the audience that the quantum computer can outperform classical computers in image classification and virtual modeling. And we're going to talk about what those are. And image classification is humans can intuitively distinguish between cats that look like dogs and dogs that look like cats. But this is very hard for AI. AI needs a lot of data with labels. So... Uh, like picture data explaining what this is and then train the AI model with the image classification capability with this big amount of data but quantum computer is very efficient in this training so what Zheng Sang told us is that quantum method learn data with 500 to 1000 times higher efficiency than the classical method so many companies are interested in efficient image recognition methods using quantum this can be used in digital marketing. So if I want to buy something and search for something, uh, let's say Google, Instagram suggests the specific or the thing that I want to buy by using the quantum um, image classification or quantum methods. And this will improve AI. So I think AI is key for the improvement is the quantum computing. So the virtual modeling is predicting future changes by analyzing the correlation of different data so such as stock prices risk analysis and forecasting the future uh, so one example is fidelity predicted the future stock prices of microsoft and apple based on the historical stock price of the two companies for the past 10 years and it created almost similar or the same to the actual calculated values for the next 10 years by using IonQ's quantum computer. So quantum computing is very good at analyzing the correlation of different data to make future predictions. So Zhang Sang also said that when a supercomputer requires 20,000 training sessions, quantum computer only needs or it showed up to thousand times higher learning efficiency. So this also relates to the energy consumption since the supercomputer or the data sensor are using a lot of energy it's not going uh, very eco-friendly so changing those data to quantum is also eco-friendly act and also it has much more efficiency and requires much less data so right now we need to develop quantum computer technology around difficult problems that supercomputers cannot solve so we'll go for the hybrid so supercomputers will do what they're good at and quantum computers will do what supercomputers cannot solve so it is complement to each other. And my thought is that starting with Microsoft acquiring OpenAI's ChatGPT for over $10 billion and integrating it to Bing, it is also said that it's already intimidating Google's uh, searching engine. So AI war already started. So Google is going for the Bard and IBM is going for Watson. So quantum computer that will contribute to the innovative development of AI will be the next trend for the investors. The second one is the IonQ's new major stockholder. So there was a, a 13G, which represents five or more percent uh, major stockholders. And the one who was going for the 13G was Vanguard Group, which is one of the largest financial institutions in earth and it has more than 15,000 stocks of IonQ which represents 7.56% of all outstanding stocks but this does not mean anything significantly because most of the stocks bought by Vanguard Group is actually for the ETF so ETF starting with V is from Vanguard and we could see the Vanguard total stock market ETF small cap small cap growth extended market so it doesn't have very big meaning so uh, only accounting for these four ETFs is almost 13 million so we cannot say that Vanguard actively seek to buy INQ stock they just bought it for the ETF purposes so 
it's not a major news, but good to know. And then Rigetti is trying for the big changes. February 10th, Rigetti announced updated plans for prioritizing higher performance and 28% headcount reduction and appoints new CFO and CTO. And as you already know, recently Rigetti's stock was traded for less than $1 for more than 30 consecutive days. So it received a delisting warning on January 25th. So it was very risky. And also on December 8th last year, Rigetti appointed Dr. Subhan Kukarni as CEO and replaced the departed founder, Chad Rigetti. So Chad Rigetti was selling his stock for more than six months and he left even when the board of directors did not appoint anyone as CEO. So that was a very bad sign. So they're trying to change something. So their updated plans. First one is Anka 184 qubits chip system to be launched in Q1. So it'll be more advanced than the current 80 qubits chip. And their top priority is to improve the performance of Anka 1 chip after launching. So they're focusing on achieving the narrow quantum advantage, which is uh, being better than the supercomputer in small categories. And Anka 184 qubits uh, goal is to have at least 99% of 2 qubits gate fidelity. And if achieved, they will go for the next development, which is for Lyra um, chip containing more than 300 qubits. So I would say the Rigetti is pretty risky for investing even more than IonQ since the uh, founder left and the new CEO is trying to do something uh, very big. So we would have to monitor how it goes, but I would not suggest investing in Rigetti for now. And there were a um, few signs for the quantum era. So the strategic value of quantum technology increased and the quantum nationalism is on the rise. So specifically in the US and China conflict, technological barriers in the quantum fields are also getting higher. So for example, February 11th, Biden administration expanded restrictions on US capital investments in China's high-tech industries, which specifically included quantum computer, AI, advanced semiconductors, and ACT. So it is blocking the source of Wall Street funds from entering China. So quantum computer is becoming strategic asset and is becoming very important for governments. So by 2025, US is investing almost $2 billion uh, from the government and China, 15 billion, EU, 7 billion, and Japan, almost 2 billion. So governments already know that the quantum is a game changer in the future. Not only governments, but also major global corporations. So my thought is that investors must see where the government global companies are investing and where the big money is flowing into. And I think that's quantum computing. So there will be a big opportunity coming pretty soon, maybe in two or three years. So my overall thought is that ChatGPT opened the AI era. And I think you already know that Nvidia is getting a lot of attention and their stock price is going up crazy. And I think the quantum computing is the key for the AI's development and for AI's usefulness. So it'll be um, apparent in a few years. And QC will be the next target for the smart investors. And Vanguard became major stockholder for IonQ, but since it's for the ETF purposes, it's no big deal. And Rigetti, which is one of the major competitors of IonQ, is trying to make big changes after the founder left but it still seems very risky, so I wouldn't suggest investing in Rigetti for now. And governments and major global corporations are investing tons of money to quantum. So quantum era is soon to come or already has come. So there will be a big opportunity as far as I could see. So today we talked about Jung Sin Kim's special lecture, IMQ's new major stockholder, Rigetti trying for the big changes and signs for the quantum era. So overall, the future of AI is the quantum, and quantum will be our next big opportunity. So that was my weekly update for today, and thank you all for listening to my video. Please subscribe, leave a like, and comment on my video. So I'll talk to you guys in the next week. Thank you.